talking about a famous composer, especially one that is of the modern times, it's always a tricky thing, especially in the times that we have been living in over the past 10 to 20 years as of the date of this recording in May of 2020. Because there is a sense of urgency for everybody in our world, it seems, to find something unique, something original. And it has been especially prevalent in the industry and the world of music, of which I am just a very, very tiny part of. Now, if you know me at all, you know that I am a big fan of John Williams. And as I mentioned, talking about a composer like that especially is tricky because there are very, very few people alive today who have not been exposed to John Williams in some form or another over the past 40 to 50 years. His earliest works were in the 50s. I believe 1958 was his first recorded film. And since then, he has written well over 200 pieces of music, probably close to 250 mostly for film, but a lot for TV as well, and even some regular concert works that most people probably have not heard because they just know him as, oh, he's the guy who did Star Wars, or, oh, he's the Jaws dude, or, oh, he did Harry Potter. But my love for John Williams has always been elusive, at least the reasons why I love John Williams. And with anything, they have shifted and changed over time. When I was a kid, it was, oh, he wrote the cool music for Star Wars, or he wrote the stuff for when E.T. was flying, or he's Indiana Jones, or, you know, anything like that. Then as I got to be a teenager and a young adult. I had a little bit more refined understanding. I was like, oh, he's actually a very good composer. He's done a lot of things, especially the first time I really watched Schindler's List and had the more grown-up understanding of how powerful that movie is and how moving his music is. But all of that would just be more piling on, I think, to the massive amounts of narratives that are out there regarding John Williams as a composer, as an orchestrator, as a brilliant weaver of leitmotifs and melodies and exploration of theme and storytelling through his music. All of that has been done to death. Everybody has done it. Everybody's put in their two cents. I might at some point in the future as well. But it is of late, in this time of being pushed, being told, being encouraged to be original, be unique, find your voice, all of these different narratives that have come around nowadays, I found myself thinking, I don't think anybody ever told that to John Williams whether it's because he grew up in a different time, whether it's because he is just that good, or whether he has been told that many times and he just didn't care. But in looking at his history of work, at his style, at the ways in which he has both made his name and kept his name, from everything it seems, he has never compromised as a composer. He has never just said, okay, yes, I'll try this new thing because it's cool. I will incorporate this new fad thing that just has been happening lately because 
you know, it's cool because it's new, because it's fresh. You know, he's not, he doesn't, he has never seemed to have that particular kind of urge as far as I can tell. Now, he has probably learned, he's probably discovered new ways of doing what he does, new, tried new techniques of orchestration, tried new ways to play with a theme or play with a melody that he's written. But it's never been because it's new and cool. It's because, oh, that's a way that I can tell this story or a way that I can make this music a little more interesting because the story could use that. So it's it's this kind of long-term dedication to his craft, his very specific but very far-reaching craft of being a composer and orchestrator. That's what he does. It's 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 as simple as that. And he has not moved or waved from that his entire career. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a career that, as of right now, has been going over 60 years. Most of his life, he's 88 years old as of this year, as of recently. So for his entire professional career, it has been just laser-focused on doing what he likes to do, what he chose to do very, very well. It hasn't been about being unique. It's never been about being original. It's never been about doing something that no one has ever done before. It was just, I'm a composer. How do I do this? And how do I do it very well? Which is something I think gets lost in all of this desperate attempt in the very large, but at the same time very small world that we live in right now, that everybody wants to have their own voice, that we want to be unique, yet we want to belong because we are a social species as human beings. And those are kind of diametrically opposing functions. Yet there's all this drive and urge, as I've mentioned before, for uniqueness, for originality. If you're not doing something unique, if you're not doing something original, then it's derivative or it's wrong or you're copying or you're stealing. And in many talks and many listens and many reads about and around this kind of subject in all areas of life, not just music, but music is what I love. It is what I have dedicated myself to. It is what gets me out of bed. It's something I still hear that if you're not doing something original, then what are you? So that is what I love about John Williams, is that despite the fame, despite the accolades, despite even despite his own modesty, he has never wavered. He still is a damn good composer, a damn good orchestrator, and he still does it the same kind of way that he has been doing it for over 60 years. <laughs> 